Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or whenever you are watching this. Thank you for taking the time to engage with my practice research project. As I can't present in person, I am putting together this clip from the countryside. Hi, from Stroud, Gloucestershire. Songs about process has been a response to a sort of distance that I have been feeling towards my practice, largely as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. I am a songwriter, and self-isolation has posed a myriad of challenges. Without the input from my collaborators, for example, I have often felt unable to finish a song. What I write remains in a sort of in-between, pre-production, raw, unpolished. This can prompt a lot of negative feelings for me as a practitioner. Frustration, a sense of inadequacy, and also lack of motivation, paired with the pressure to produce new material and make it presentable, whatever that might mean. And all this contributes to the kind of distance I mentioned earlier, pulling me away from my music, giving rise to a resistance to just play. Here you can see me starting to wrap my head around my research project. Over the last nine months or so, in an effort to find ways for a creative survival, as I find such a distance rather threatening, an emphasis on process has been incredibly rewarding. Process over product. Paying attention to the intricacies of doing, the mess, the beauty and the honesty within that. Finding value in it. Trying to flatten out ontological hierarchies between moments of practice. Hierarchies that I have held dear for a very long time that I am working to undo. This also goes to show that this research project, although it came to a boil during a concentrated phase of a week-long self-experiment, on which I will elaborate here, spans much wider than I can represent in this instance. There's a vast before and perhaps an even larger after. For this self-experiment, I wanted to carve out a designated and rather intensive time frame to explore the consequences of really committing to this technique of making process paramount. For a week in April this year, I played and sang every day. My instruments are piano and guitar, trying to respond musically to my initial research question. How may a refocusing on process afford me a renewed relationship or closeness with my practice? I recorded the experimental phase largely through video. This is my partner Cal having a little cameo here but also through voice notes, pictures, and reflective journaling every night, which in itself is not only a method of documentation, but a form of articulating the knowledge that is at home in doing. I'll pull up a mind map, detailing the parameters of the experiment, but I think it's important to note that a lot of these were a result of practice and reflection rather than a prerequisite. Each day I learned a little bit more and was able to explore my findings in the days that followed. The key parameters that I want to point out, however, are these. As I said, I played and sang every day. The sessions will be in the afternoon and last around two to three hours. I didn't have a set goal for each day, no specific song that needed working on. I just made time and made an effort to be led by my practice, by my intuition and by paying attention to joy. In her book, The Artist's Way, Julia Cameron says that survival lies in sanity, and sanity lies in paying attention. The quality of life is in proportion, always, to the capacity for delight. The capacity for delight is the gift of paying attention. Her words resonate with me a lot and link this type of paying attention to process, to my creative survival. I also made a commitment to allow myself to delve into some of my old material, old songs, unfinished or not, and fragments of musical ideas. These came out of an epistemic rupture in March. I had just gotten a new guitar and I was playing to get to know the instrument, not to generate new material and I found myself adding melodies and lyrics to two songs that I had written in 2015 with an ease that utterly surprised me. When I was 18, I picked up this book called How to Be an Artist by Michael Avatar, and in his advice on how to start, he says, don't read back or look at what you have made, as well as abandon any project over five years old and begin again. I can now say that I wholeheartedly disagree with this, and I actively went against his recommendations for this project. In order to assist myself in the placing of value on process, I also did not look back at the video footage until the experiment was over, and I would only create melodies and lyrics in session. I'd play with the words that would come to me in the moment and decidedly would not review them in a non-musical context. In simple terms, I wanted to explore my doing, not critique it, and reading the notes of my lyrics over breakfast, perhaps, may have brought about a more critical eye which I wanted to avoid. I hoped to be non-judgmental. Over the course of seven days, five songs emerged as spaces for inquiry. I felt drawn to them the most, so explored them most attentively, and interestingly, they all expanded in one way or another. For the sake of saving time, I will only be able to show development footage of one song here, so in the following minutes you will see a collection of moments of me engaging with a song called The Artist, constantly reinstantiating it as I write a new bridge and ending, 
yet also exploring the song at large. Mine 
What I initially understood to be a reacquainting with my music I soon was able to articulate as a form of getting to know my songs, getting to know them intimately. And a way of doing this was looking at my work as unfinished, as well as not trying to complete it, but playing with it. There is this quote by Derrida that has been with me for quite some time now, and I think in light of this project it has become even more poignant to me. He says, The idea of the book, which always refers to a natural totality, is profoundly alien to the sense of writing. I believe this is relevant as he characterizes writing as eluding completion, as continuous, and there's no reason not to extend writing to songwriting. It frames my new appreciation for my practice as taking up residence in doing, in making, in instantiating, in reflecting, and not necessarily in a finished product. In fact, learning this, and crucially, allowing myself to value this, also poses questions around the nature of my songs, which leads me to a link between closeness and openness. The closeness that I sought out at the start of this project I found through openness. What I mean by that is, through engaging with my music in an inquisitive way, that is, decidedly taking out the pressure to generate material or judge its quality, not discarding old work in an attempt to chase progress, not aiming for closure, I found an openness in my songs that I hadn't been aware of before. At present, I have two metaphors to try and articulate my new understanding of my songs and their parts. Now, these metaphors aren't fully developed yet, nor do they exactly match, but these are the images that arose as a consequence of this experiment. Songs as fabric, and song parts as sediment in water. With fabric, I don't mean textiles necessarily. In fact, I think the material could endlessly vary, but I am referring to a changeability, a responsiveness. Songs, to me, are like fabric, in a way that I can stretch them, fold them, bunch them, carry them with me. They are affected by a multitude of things, but imperatively here, they are affected by doing, my doing. And through my active engagement, I encountered gaps in the fabric that I could situate myself in, it seems. Gaps to find meaning, gaps to expand on the songs, gaps to find closeness. The image of sediment then relates to the action of engaging with the song's parts, placing new elements within it, examining what's already there, reinstantiating it with a great deal of curiosity. Whenever I wrote something new, I would explore how it would feel, how it might settle into the song, like sinking to the bottom of a body of water. Each part might be made of different matter, so it sinks differently, and responds to the movement in water differently. I would not judge this process, and truly, I found songwriting with this image in mind a lot easier, a lot more joyful. Sediment also relates to a similar kind of changeability that I see in the fabric metaphor. It may rise, it may sink, it may wash away, it may change position or be the ground for what's to follow. Yet it evades permanence. It might always respond to movement, just different kinds of movement, and different moments in time. Plus, I can trace this movement back to me. Perhaps practice is movement. This leaves me with a question. Is a song ever finished? Where I'm at now, I would answer this question with no. But I would like to investigate further. Moreover, I believe there are also questions around the effects of repetition here. In queer phenomenology, Sarah Ahmed states that the work of repetition is not neutral work. It orients the body in some ways and not others. And I agree with that, as repetition was a key part of my experiment, and I hope I managed to demonstrate this in the clips before. Repetition, to me, can yield rather drastically different results. Often it does assist the settling of parts. A melody and its lyrics find their place in a song and stay there, almost like a solidifying action, albeit still evading permanence. But on the other hand, I found that repetition could also unsettle the parts, so to speak, move them, change them, a little or a lot, expose or even create gaps to fill and play with. Other questions or insights that emerged were around familiarity. The five songs that I wrote or expanded on during my self-experiment all developed from previous work of mine. I am left wondering if perhaps the familiarity I felt towards them helped counter the distance to my music that I was feeling before. It was easier to situate myself in spaces that I already knew, figuratively speaking. It also, maybe, 
mitigated the sense of performativity I was feeling, sharing a living space with my partner almost 24-7. Before the pandemic, I'd often write songs when I was alone, allowing me to experiment with my voice and my instruments more freely. My current lack of privacy when playing composes a vulnerability. Yet playing songs are fragments I already know, and one can always know the more I have learned. Felt much less vulnerable in the presence of my partner than trying to start from scratch, although I dare to question if such a thing even exists. Overall, I can say that I have found recognizing and exploring unfinishedness or openness incredibly encouraging and inviting. It has not only shifted my relationship with my practice, pulled me closer, but ironically, this way I also managed to generate much more musical material than I anticipated. This then leads me to mention how this inquiry has also given rise to a much larger research project I am embarking on now for the following months. Supervised by Caroline Kennedy, I will be exploring how not finishing may impact the process of making, which I am very excited about. I will now close with sharing a recording of my song The Artist that I made on day 8, just one day out of my experimental phase. Again, I would like to stress that this is not to suggest a completion of the song. The song remains open, but to document its current shape, a moment in time, an instance of practice. Thank you for listening. Reading of admiration, drowning in self-doubt He's aware of his glimmer, how he owns this crowd Smiles in the limelight, singing a bittersweet song He's pleading his heart out in vain, clap along in the sea.